वर्णिवे शर्मणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज ने जय ओल माटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बी लॉर्ड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कछुओ लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण On the 3rd December 1820 Bhagwan Swaminarayan was seated in the very remote village of Loya in Surakhachar's darbar As that was the December in India so definitely that was very cold in the village so Bhagwan Swaminarayan covered himself with several different different kinds of cl- uh, winter clothes and you were more than that bhagwan had also covered himself with a white blanket now there were different different santos and devotees from many different places they were also seated in front of bhagwan in the sabha there bhagwadanand swami and sivanand swami both together they asked a question to bhagwan swami narayan Bhagwadanand Swami and Sivanand Swami ask Maharaj what are the characteristic of a person who has faith in God and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glory or greatness So how can we find out that if a person has the qualities of faith in Bhagwan's form as well as his ekantik sant's form in reply maharaj first give a definition of a devotee who has faith in the form of bhagwan and then after after giving brief description regarding faith in the form of bhagwan and his son coupled with the knowledge of their glorious greatness bhagwan then after narrated himself the glories and greatness of his own devotees what had happened in the lives of different different devotees in this way bhagwan swami had narrated different stories so that by listening and understanding the stories from the different devotees life the other devotees can also understand as well as imbibe those virtues in their own life because the devotees life story that was the practical thing for the another devotees if i want to walk on a same path as one had already passed from that path and if i follow that person then without any deficit uh, without any kind of problems i can easily pass that way as well and that is why bhagwan swami narayan narrated in loya different different devotees story First, Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself narrated the stories of Galuji of village Dadusar, then after Kusal Kur by of Dharampur, and then after Parvat by. Now today, Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself narrated the stories from the life of Raj Bai. As we listen, the name Raj Bai meaning that was definitely a female devotee. Raj Bai was very staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan but even more than that she was not like the other women or the other female devotees she was directly came on this earth from Bhagwan's divine abode Akshardham so at the time of Bhagwan's birth she witnessed that incident not only that but even after bhagwan swami narayan himself performing his bal charitra meaning childhood episodes and after that 
भगवान हैड रिनाउंस हिज होम हिज फैमिली हिज विलेज एंड ट्रावल इन डिपेज जंगल्स एंड डीप फॉरेस्ट एंड इन द हिमालय इन दिस वे एट वॉट एवर प्लेस भगवान वैन सी इजीली विदाउट एनी पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ एनी मीन्स सी कैन विटनेस ऑल दोज इंसिडेंट दैट भगवान स्वामी नारायण एट दैट टाइम परफॉर्मिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ एपिसोड इवन वाइल स्टेइंग इन हर होम दैट वॉज हर ग्रेटनेस एंड दैट इज वाई वी कैन इजीली अंडरस्टैंड दैट वन हु कैन केम डिरेक्टली फ्रॉम अक्सरधाम ओनली दैट हैज दिस दिस काइंड ऑफ एबिलिटी टू सी भगवान इन ऑल three forms this was the greatness of rajbai but here bhagwan swami narayan narrated that narrated the stories regarding devotees faith in the form of bhagwan and in the form of sant as rajbai has this much affection and she understood the glory and greatness of bhagwan so now she definitely had a natural dislike for family and family life she did not want to remain in the society she did not want to marry she did not want to stay even in her home and instead she decided to stay in garuda with other female devotees she also wanted to worship bhagwan swami and while staying after renouncing family relation everything and only staying in garuda she desired to worship bhagwan swami narayan but at uh, but as she grew gradually finally as she became mature his mother uh, rajbai's mother she decided to engage rajbai in marriage life but as rajbai decided not to marry and instead she desired to worship bhagwan so once she even declared in front of her parent that i do not want to marry i do not want to even stay with you in this home i want to worship bhagwan while staying far from our village and staying at garuda so give me this permission to stay and live at another place so that i can worship bhagwan but her parents they decided not to give the permission to worship bhagwan instead they themselves without asking rajbai they arranged her marriage and once Rajbai's mother she said to her that Rajbai today we brought a new clothes for you because after so and so week or after this month or after two months what you the time decided after some period of time we have arranged your marriage and for the marriage ceremony we already brought a new clothes for you then as we know rajbai has natural dislike for this family life so in an intense dislike rajbai say to her mother may burn your may burn those no, new clothes and immediately without any cause those pair of new clothes started to burn automatically without any cause fire lit those clothes and even one can understand what was happening and immediately all clothes become an ash so this is what the power of rajbai's words that whatever she 
speak whatever she desire that immediately happen because of bhagwan's grace and even we can say as she came directly from aksardham meaning she was not an ordinary female devotee but she was a uh, mukta from aksardham so just as muktanand swami gopalanand swami and other santo they have the power that what they speak become truth in the same way rajbai speak in such a way that immediately her words become true just as we many time listen gopanan swami's words become true muktanand swami's words become true in the same way rajbai's words or her sankal immediately become true after even after watching the greatness and power of her words still rajbai's parents they did not stop they forcefully completed the marriage ceremony and after that rajbai decided not to stay even for a moment in her home so once she herself renounced her home and directly reached at garuda there she was staying with the other female devotees jiuba laduba and she worshiped bhagwan swami narayan now after many days passed in this full devotion towards bhagwan swami narayan once her relatives her family members they came to maharaj and they requested maharaj maharaj we came here to take our rajbai to back to home so please grant her permission and if you give command then she definitely come with us otherwise she did not ready to come with us then bhagwan swami narayan the sabha there was an assembly and in the assembly rajbai was also seated in the female devotees group so as bhagwan swami narayan gave command that please rajbai this your relatives they come here to take you back to your home so please go with them and worship while staying there in your home while listening these words from bhagwan as she has too much affection and too much devotion for bhagwan and even more than that even she decided formally that i do not want to engage myself in so, uh, in social or in a so- society or family life then why they all forcefully engage me or they why they all my bodily relatives without thinking anything else why they force me to stay in their home while thinking in this way as she decided to stay only in the company of bhagwan so now she she was feeling like separation from bhagwan only by listening bhagwan's words that you should go there to your home and worship me while staying there when rajbai listened these those words of bhagwan she immediately in intense separation from bhagwan she fell unconscious even blood came out from each pore of her body and more than that as intense separation from bhagwan she was experienced at the time so the blood from her body they also become gradually dry up so the whole body become like black after this bhagwan said to her relatives that now see what is happening here as you want as you wanted to take her back to your home and i gave command in front of you now see 
what is her condition then all of rajbai's relatives they pray to maharaj now you are true bhagwan and her devotion towards you that's also true now we do not want to take her back in our home we give permission to her stay here and worship your divine form while staying with the other female devotees we do not want anything from her please forgive us and then after bhagwan swami and himself say to rajbai rajbai please come in consciousness then now give permission to you stay here in our company then while listening these divine words of bhagwan rajbai came back in consciousness and she forever stay in gadda and now after this incident bhagwan swami narayan uh, called dada khachar and bhagwan swami narayan said dada khachar this is your sister and keep all the other arrangements as you have for uh, jeuba and laduba so please make all kinds of arrangement for rajbai also she was now today uh, from today she was she, she, she was your sister dada khachar provided her all kinds of facilities and especially a uh, room and all the other facilities and rajbai while staying in garuda in company of the other female devotees laduba jeuba ram bai other female devotees she all uh, all the day engage herself in devotion of bhagwan swami narayan this is what her faith in the form of bhagwan that even she can uh, even she renounced her family her family members or even more than that even her marriage ceremony was over still did not stay even for a moment in her home and renouncing all these relatives she directly come to bhagwan only to worship now even more than the other incidents also happen now rajbai without any fear of her body relatives without any tension she worship bhagwan swami narayan but as she directly came from aksardham so she she was living her life in such a way that the other female devotees get inspiration from her life and that is why she decided to follow eightfold celibacy like the santo they have the rules and regulations in the same way she also follow the same kind of rules and regulations like santo has a rules not to see not to touch not to talk with the females in the same way rajbai also follow the same rules like not to talk not to touch not to see any male even she took a vows always keep her body away 20 feet away from any male so in this way she was performing all rules and regulations for a renouncing devotee and while eating only very little amount of food she also performing very harsh austerities to please bhagwan and according to her vows not to touch any male even when her time of death near so just we all the other devotees or the other ordinary persons they have the death the main difference from the body of the aksardham's mukto they have totally different things like they also get born they also 
in the same way appear on this earth as a human they all perform all episodes all different stages of their life like they become child after grow up and become youth and even become old in this way they all show us these different different kinds of stage of one's life but they have still different so raj bhai uh she decided to go back to aksardham it is not the death who come to her but she herself decided now i want to go back to aksardham and that's why before getting death before meeting death she announced that even i have follow these rules throughout my life that not to touch any male and even keep my body away 20 feet away from any male so after my death i give to touch my dead body i give permission on i give permission to touch my even dead body only to dada khachar but no any other male even devotees would touch my dead body and dada khachur would perform all my final ritual meaning the after death ceremonies as according to de- uh, decided day she went back to aksardham and left this mortal body as the final uh, according to our scriptures we have to do our final ritual and according to that ritual we have to give a fire to our dead body so according to this ritual as pre decided and according to rajbai's desire that only dada khachur would touch her body so dada khachur was performing the final ritual and in the cremation ground there were all the other devotees who were present over there and when dada khachar tried to give a fire to rajbai's dead body even fire cannot touch the rajbai's dead body even fire cannot lead the those wooden blocks and finally after many times dada khachar tried to give a fire but as all times he failed so they all went to goparan swami and requested swami swami this is the situation fire cannot lead at even a small uh, wood or even not a grass so what we should do now then Gopanan Swami, he was, he had also the same power like that of Bhagwan. So he said, as she, she had a vow and she followed the vow not to touch any male, and even keep herself twenty feet away from any male. And you know, this Agni, as his manifest form, Agni Dev, he has a male appearance, and that's why. agni they also decided if i touch rajbai's body then she curse me and because of that even i myself burn out so by thinking in this way even agni dev could not touch her body then gopanand swami requested that agni agni dev that rajbai was not remain in this body this is her dead body so that there, uh, there is no problem not at all to touch her dead body and when gopanand swami gave command to agni dev and finally dada uh, gopanand swami said to dada khachar please now go and perform the ceremony and finally in this way dada khachar gave fire to 
Rajbai's dead body and the ceremony was over. But this is all Bhagwan Swaminarayan narrated in the assembly of santo and devotees. Why? Because Rajbai, uh, Rajbai, by her life, she inspired many other female devotees to live in such a way that one can easily get pleasures of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. If one has such faith in form of Bhagwan and Sant, so one can easily get Bhagwan's and Sant's Rajipo and because of this Rajipo one can easily attain God realization in one's life. Even while alive one can experience the divine bliss, divine happiness of divine about Aksardam and divine form of Maharaj. This is what Rajbai's story uh, our Pucha Guruji has narrated Laduba, Jiuba, Rajba and many other female devotees life story. We should also listen those kathas. This is only in brief but Pucha Guruji had narrated those stories in, uh, in very interesting method. So if one start to listen those katha, we can even do not stop in a half way and our, even, even our mind and even our heart desire to listen more and more time. That was the interesting story Pujapat Guruji has narrated in his Katha. Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dharmatmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swamina Rayanam Nilakandham Bhaje Ghanshyam Maharajani Jai Prabhutava Murati Vinodakari Palapana Visare Nahi Jo Visari Jugala Charana Sola Chinna Jeha नजर सामी पे रहो अमारी हा नजर सामी पे रहो अमारी हा कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑलमाइटी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the pathmaker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagaji, and all of you devotees, Jay Swami Narayana. Evil men cannot give up their wicked nature, then why should we give up our pious nature? This was one of the fundamental principles taught by Bhagwan Swami Narayan to his saints while they went out and served the community 200 years ago. From last lecture 
of Sadhguru Muktanand Swami's life, we learned many, many aspects in how Muktanand Swami possessed the highest pinnacle of saintliness. Today we continue to take a dive into his life and see what kind of qualities he had as a sadhu deeper and deeper inside his life. Such kind of a sadhu has no limits. His qualities are limitless, just like how Bhagwan Swami Narayan is limitless. In the same way, due to the connection with Bhagwan, such a sadhu is also limitless. He does not have any kind of boundaries in this world or the world after. He shows glimpses of his power, of his strength on this earth. And from that, we can comprehend a mere tiny bit and install it into our life. That is the very reason why such kind of sadhus Bhagwan puts on this earth. Such kind of role model sadhus. So, without further ado, we would like to take another dive into Sadhguru Muktan Swami's life prasangs. In this book called Sadhguru Muktan and Swami, This story is called Liberation to Liberation to Mulu Dosi. Once upon a time, Muktan Swami, along with a few saints, came to a nearby village called it Ganala for begging alms. He approached the doorway of a home and shouted, Narayan Hare Sachidanan Prabhu. See, in that time, it was very difficult to attain food. Not only that, but by the command of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, sadhus had to actually go and beg house to house for some grains such as rice or other kinds of beans or anything so that they can cook themselves and then partake in. So, Muktan Swami with a group of saints were going from home to home begging for alms and when they would approach a home they would say Narayan Hare Sachidanan Prabhu meaning this was a short saying that each and every householder knew that whenever this was heard outside of their doorway that saints or some kind of or anyone who has renounced their world the world has come to beg for food so, there was an old lady there. Her name was Mulu, Mulu Dosi. She was busy in coloring the walls of her home with a cloth. Meaning in that time, obviously, for those who wouldn't understand, they didn't have paint brushes. So they used cloth. They would dip it in paint and then they would pretty much paint their walls in that way. When she saw Muktan Swami, she became furious and threw the cloth in his face. Muktan Swami was looking down the whole time. He uttered, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. Thus, they left the home. However, Muktan Swami kept the cloth with him. When they reached a pond, he took a bath and he washed the cloth and cleaned it. Now, if we think about it, Muktan Swami was just begging for alms and he got insulted without any kind of particular reason because in that time, as we have discussed before, there was a lot of uproar. Many, many haters of the Swaminarayan Sampradaya lived throughout the, throughout the villages of Gujarat. And due to that, upon reaching this old lady, she had probably heard some kind of, you can say, hypocrisy that the Swaminarayan faith is like this and their sadhus are like this. And due to that, 
she insulted Muktan Swami by throwing a cloth, a paint cloth, to his face directly. Swami did not say anything. Swami just chanted Bhagwan's name, took the cloth, and went to a pond, took a bath, and also washed the cloth. Now, let's see what kind of a saint Muktan Swami is and how he looks upon others. Because by analyzing this small charitra, we can definitely measure or examine our life and see that there is no such kind of circumstances that we have ever approached in our life that we would even have to go through yet. What kind of reactions are we, you can say, making? And what kind of reaction is Sadhguru Muktan Swami making? Soon after, drying the cloth, he separated all the threads, soaked them in ghee, and made a wick. In the evening, the saints got together, lit up the lamp from the wick. Thus, the whole room filled the beaming radiance. Muktan Swami said to the sadhus, this wick is made from the cloth thrown at me by that old lady. So our room is filled with light. We must chant the name of God so her heart will be filled with devotion. Such kind of a sadhu, Muktan Swami, what he did was he made a wick. He, he took each thread, he dipped it in ghee, clarified butter, and he made, made it into a wick and lit a lamp. So the whole room would be filled. Now, a cloth that was thrown, how can it be connected to that old lady? And how could it possibly give her devotion or liberate her soul? It has no connection. It has no meaning. It doesn't make sense. In the eyes of those who perceive this Charitra, this prasang, this story to be ordinary or simple. But in the eyes of those who believe that this satsang is divine, in the eyes of those who believe that each and every charitra by such kind of a sadhu is divine, can definitely accept in his heart or her heart that this charitra done by Bhagavad Muktanan Swami and by mere making a wick and lighting it up is definitely the very cause why this lady this old lady will maybe not in this life but the life after become a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and go to his divine abode Akshardham it is not about the mere object that Muktan Swami had selected a cloth to liberate this soul. But it is about the whole, you can see, subtle part or the, the thought that Muktan Swami possessed that with this cloth, I would make this wick and with the wick, the whole light of the whole room would be lit and we would chant Bhagwan's name. This is not... This is simple, yet the thought behind Muktan Swami that I still want to liberate this soul, even if this soul has insulted me, even if this soul has insulted me, I still want to connect this soul with Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Due to that strong sankalp, due to that very firm, very firm thought process by Muktan Swami, this process occurred. What process? Let's take a look. The sadhu started chanting Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, while remembering God in their heart. It vibrated the heart of Muludosi. She regretted for performing such a wicked act. Waves of devotion began to spring up in her heart. She was determined to ask for forgiveness, hoping the sadhus would come the following day to her home. Now we can say, due to the chanting, of sadhus in remembering God in their heart or on the other side we can say due to the mere thought 
of Sadhguru Muktanand Swami, a whole change occurred in this lady's life. There is a Vachnamrut, Kadada, first chapter, 58, where there is a question asked by Anandan Swami that how could <clears throat> how could we please Bhagwan? Meaning, there's three kinds of <clears throat> obstacles. One is our body. One is our, uh, you can say, uh, friendship or bad sung. And the other, last one is Purvana Sanskar, meaning bad uh, sanskars from the past. The question is that how could one worship God when there is, you know, aversion occurring? And the answer to that is, Maharaj says, is that by pleasing the great Satpurush. Now, Anand Swami again asked, how could the Satpurush be pleased? So, Maharaj said that there are four ways in where the Satpurush can be pleased. Where number one, that if one becomes honest. Number two, if one uh, pretty much tries to uh, get rid of one's faults. Number three, if one becomes das na das. And number four, one keeps bowing down to saints and devotees in satsang. Such kind of way as ekantik sat purush can be pleased. Now, regarding that question, this prasang had nothing to do with you can say the whole factor of how Muludosi changed her whole perspective, her whole life changed. But the mere thought, the mere, you can say, daya, compassionate nature of Muktan Swami changed Muludosi. And due to that, devotion arised in her heart. Now, practically looking right now, Suppose that we are devotees coming to, suppose, Loyadam, New Jersey, here. And Puja Guruji is here, present, and you come to the mandir, and you are just sitting there. Puja Guruji spots you from afar. He says, get up and start doing, you can say, utbes meaning a type of punishment where you have to grab your ears and go up and down, kind of like a squatting position. The whole assembly is there. Now, Puja Guruji, without any kind of reason, without any kind of warning, without even telling you anything pre predecided or anything before the whole assembly, he tells you to do this. Yet, on... There's two sides. One side, you think, we call him Guruji? Why is he doing this? What is the reason for this? I have not done anything wrong. This is a type of punishment. Look at how insulting it is. There's many, many people looking here at me. On the other side, Buja Guruji is doing whatever he's doing for the sake of my benefit. But one must understand that's not only it, but on a deeper basis to think more in a subtle manner. Any kind of kriya, action, that an ikandik Satpurush commands us to do, we may not even know, but that is burning our thousands and thousands of sins from our past lives. He only knows that because he can read our soul. But we may not even know it. We just think that it's a physical act of performing a punishment in front of many, many people and becoming publicly ridiculed. But more than that, that action is so minute that it is burning doubt. Let's just say, for example, I'm giving you, thousands and thousands of sins from our past. But who will know this? Who can know this? Only Bhagwan and his Ekandik Satpurush. In the same way, Sadguru Muktanan Swami, by collecting the cloth 
and making it into a wick and lighting the room up. And, w and, and just by merely commanding santos to chant Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, and to view Bhagwan in their heart. That was just a mere setup, you can say. But Muktanand Swami's mere thought of completely destroying this soul's bhav so that it, this soul can attach to Bhagwan Swami Narayan and attain liberation was his main point of view. Now, whether he does it by, you can say, collecting cloth and doing and making such a process, or by even sending other devotees to do satsang with this dosi and try to make him become good, whatever process the Ekantik Satpurush uses, it's just something beyond our compre comprehension. But we can definitely say that this kind of an act cannot be seen from the naked eye. It has to be seen from the inner eye. Even in Sadguru Gopan Swami's Vato, Swami says that the great Ekantik Satpurush's Kriya cannot be ever, you can say, you can say estimated or it can be, you can say measured. Because even if he's eating very tasty foods, he has no taste. Even if he ha even if he's possessing the greatest of, you can say, pleasures of, you can say, greed, it looks like he has, but he has no greed. There's many, many levels of examination that we have to go through when we are in association with such an ekantik satpurush, to believe, but to believe such an ekantik satpurush, to be absolutely flawless, is the very reason to obtain and attain his qualities, according to Sadguru Gunantidan Swami. But continuing on, let's see what happens. The next day, as Mulu Dosi was waiting, the sadhus passed by her home. She became overwhelmed with joy. She bowed down and begged pardon. Muktan Swami was pleased with her transformation. She was convinced that Lord Swaminarayan is supreme and became a staunch satsangi just by the mere thought of Muktanand Swami. Now, just for clarification, obviously there was an, a, a medium there. Muktan Swami always had devotees with him for communication, but the devotees would go and give the message and the devotees would come back and relay the message back to Swami. And due to that, Swami became pleased when he heard that Mulu Dosi has changed her ways and has completely turned around and has become a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. A very short charitra, but gives a powerful message on how we should look upon society, anyone and everyone. And I've narrated many, many times that Puja Guru, Guruji possesses the same kind of a nature where you have heard many times that in the city, city of Vadodara, Puja Guruji was passing by and the driver must have hit the bike man and then the bike man got out and slapped Puja Guruji yet there was many many devo there was a couple of devotees and sadhus who were ready to grab that person but Guruji said go ahead and sit back in the, the car and he all on top told the driver to give him money for the damages and he was set free such kind of a nature Ekantik Satpurush possesses in this world for the liberation of that soul. But who knows that Maharaj wanted the driver to hit the bike so that he can have the darshan of such an Ekantik Satpurush as our Puja Guruji. And for that, in his next life, he would become a satsangi and worship Bhagwan Swami Narayan and become a devotee. Such kind of Things are occurring constantly, constantly, all around us. But we cannot see it because it's divine. We cannot see it because we don't have that kind of a vision. But definitely, when we are in the association of an Ekantik Satpurush, 
we must not believe him to be ordinary like a human because his internal waves, his internal aura, his internal perspective is divine and far beyond any comprehension of any human beings on this earth. So saying this, we can learn from Sadhguru Muktan Swami's life on how he possessed uh, such kind of qualities. And we'll continue in our next lecture regarding Sadhguru Muktanan Swami's life. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan.